Welcome to part 9 of the tutorial. This part is about the graphics modes of the Atari. The reference for what I'm going to talk about uh, is this nice web page. It's guri.atari8.info where you will find lots of information not only about the graphic mode but everything around Atari in a short and concise way that will help you get a grasp of how the Atari works. And when it comes to graphics, the Atari is a very sophisticated system. Its predecessor is the Atari VCS, and its successor actually is the Commodore Amiga, and all these three chipsets were designed by the same per person, by J Minor. And when you know them, you will find the similarities and you'll see the evolution. Okay, how do we start? I will start by switching to the overall schematics of the Atari to give you an idea how the graphics generation works. On this overall picture, you will find everything that is about ROM in this area. So here we have cartridges, we have the basic ROM, and we have the operating system. All the RAM is down here. And like with most home computers, the CPU and the primary graphics chip, which is called Antic, are closely related both on the board and conceptually. Now I zoom in a little take this into the center. So what do we have here? We have here Sally, which is a 6502 variant of a CPU. We have Antic, that is actually also a coprocessor, a real microprocessor with an own program. We have GTIA, that produces, based on the input given by Antic, the actual video output. Actual video output means we have four lines with the digital information about the brightness. So we have 16 potential brightnesses. We have the composite sync signal and we have the color information. GTIA is able to create uh, pixels from a palette of 265 col colors, uh, out of which 128 are available in most graphics modes. So, more specifically, what is Antic? Let's see what Antic is where Antic is connected to. Antic is connected to the bus for the memory. It is connected to the CPU and it is connected to GTIA. As I mentioned, Antic is a real microprocessor. Its program is called DisplayList and it has an own instruction set with which you can describe how the structure of your screen is in terms of vertical areas. Yeah, so you can write something like start the screen with 25 blank lines, create 24 lines of text and then wait for the next frame to start. This is how a typical text screen looks like, but there are of course not only text screens. What Antic can also do is Antic can stop the CPU and Antic can create interrupts and can do both at specific points in time that are controllable by you as the coder. So you can have interrupts every frame or you can have interrupts in specific lines of the display list. And what you can also do is you can sync the CPU with a raster beam. This is how Antic stops the CPU to prevent some flickering when you change colors or something on a line basis. Okay. So Antic performs DMA based on its program, reads all the relevant data for characters and screen bitmaps from the memory, and it feeds it into GTIA via these four lines. GTIA now transforms this input, this bit stream, into the actual pixel stream. And uh, this transformation is based on the graphics mode and the registers in GTIA Mainly the registers in GTIA perform a translation of which bit pattern translates to which color uh, from the palette. GTIA can not only create pixels for the so-called play field, that means the actual graphics, it also provides some movable objects that are called players and missiles. They are the predecessors of what is called sprites on most other systems. And uh, also the data for the sprites is fed into GTIA uh, based on Antic, not based on, uh, on the display list, but on some other control registers. So it fetches the data for the sprites and also feeds them line by line into GTIA.
Worth mentioning is that uh, there are two versions of the GTIA. One is called the CTIA, which was a very early one, and the second one is called the GTIA. They basically do the same thing. The difference is that the GTIA adds a new control register by which you can change the interpretation of the bit stream that is there in high-res mode. So if you have high-res mode with uh, two, 320 by 192 pixels, you can switch on a control register and change the interpretation. And then GTIA will not use one bit per pixel, but four bits per pixel. And as a consequence, you will be able to use either 16 colors with the same brightness, or 16 brightnesses in the same color, or uh, one of the all nine color registers Unfortunately, there are only nine ra color registers there, otherwise we would have 16 color registers to choose from, but technically there are only nine. So, what do we get out of this hardware? And there is a nice summary on the web page, and here is a list of the 15 conceptual graphics modes that the Atari has. Uh, the graphics modes are numbered 0 to 15, that is the numbering that you see in BASIC, in Atari BASIC, when you use the graphics command. Um, one reason why I don't show this now interactively in the emulator is that for this you need the Atari BASIC ROM in the emulator to run it. And this is not available in my download, so I stick to this. Anyway, this is not a BASIC course. But it's important to know these numbers. So graphics 0 is what you have seen by now. It's a standard text mode. Then there is graphics 1 which is uh, which provides more colors and less characters and there is graphics 2 which provides the same amount of colors but less lines so these are standard text mode stretched text mode and double stretched text mode so why do these different text modes exist um, first of all and this is true for all the graphics modes when the Atari was created, memory was a very scarce resource. Scarce resource, And everything was designed about saving memory where possible. Be it the memory that you have in your cartridge, because the cartridge was only 2, 4 or 8K in size, or be it the actual RAM in the machine, because the initial Atari 400s were shipped or planned to be shipped with 16K only. And there are different memory extensions, so the actual amount of memory in the Atari can vary. And saving memory was key, so a graphics mode that saves memory is very important. You can find the same pattern uh, in, in higher level machines like the Amiga or the Atari ST, where you have a concept of bit planes. So you can keep the amount of memory that you need to fill the screen low if there is not so much detail or color required. Okay. Modes one, uh, 0, 1 and 2 are normal text modes as you know them. There are multicolor variants of them. They are called 12 and 13. They are also text modes. You can see it here. All the other modes are graphics modes. And graphics modes means bitmap modes where one or two or maybe even four bits in a byte uh, constitute one pixel on the screen. Yeah, nowadays most of these other character, uh, most of these low resolution modes, you wouldn't typically use it. Yeah, unless you have a very specific demo, for example, where you need low resolution, where you need m more speed, so you trade uh, resolution for amount of memory for pixel. Um, mostly, you will today find that you use either the high resolution graphics. or the high-resolution multicolor graphics, or one of the text modes that I've mentioned. These numbers that are listed here, as so told, they are conceptual numbers, um, and I mentioned it before. There is ANTIC and there is GTIA, and from the ANTIC point of view, there are not 15 different graphics modes. Actually, there are three less, because for ANTIC, the uh, graphics modes 9, 10 and 11, they are simply also mode F. Mode F means the most high resolution 
uh, mode there is. So GTIA is fed with 320 bits per line. And then GTIA simply changes the interpretation for every pair uh, or for every four bits either into use or brightnesses or colors in a color register. So how do these different modes look like? The page provides some nice examples, so let's just go through them. This is the standard text mode, as you know it, with a resolution of 14 characters by 24 lines, almost 1K required. Then we have the graphics one. There you have uh, less characters per line because a character is displayed in double width. And um, also you don't have as many characters available from the character set as you have in the normal text mode. In text mode you have the full 128 characters available. In graphics mode 1, and this is also mo for graphics mode 2, you only have 64 characters available simply because the two uh, most significant bits of the character value are used as an index for the palette. Yeah? And that is also the reason why in graphics mode 0 you only have two colors due to some more limitations. You actually have one color and two brightnesses, so you cannot have red text on blue ground. You only can have light blue text on light blue ground or light red text on light um, red background. Opposed to that, you have real background color and up to four colors you can choose from in this graphics mode 1. Graphics mode 2 is like graphics mode 1. The difference is the uh, characters are stretched also vertically, so you need only half the amount of memory for this. And now we start with the first graphics mode, which is graphics 3, the most low resolution graphics mode, four colors, two bits used for something that would normally be one character, so the whole screen only takes up 400 and something bytes. And when we go further now, you will always find something like low resolution 2 color, low resolution 4 color, higher resolution 2 color, higher resolution 4 color, and then finally we arrive at the most high resolution modes with 316 bits and 40 bytes per line. You need the full 8K to do this and this is how it looks like. This is uh, like you know from more also other uh, home computers, this is what you know is a high resolution screen. The Atari does not have any kind of attribute RAM. Yeah, this is it's all palette based and there is no attribute RAM. This is why you require for example this text mode and using the uh, bits from the screen RAM if you want to have different colors. Yeah, this is mode 9. From Antic point of view it's the same as mode 8, so it's F. Just the interpretation has changed. This is mode 10, so where you have again 4 bits per pixel, but since there are only 9 color registers, there are only 9, <laughs> nine valid combinations and then it repeats. Mode 11 is like mode 10 and mode 9, a GTIA mode, and it interprets the uh, 4 bits not as different brightnesses, but as different colors, and the brightness is global for the whole screen. Okay, not so many left. Graphics mode 12, this is like graphics mode 0, but it's multicolor, so two bits of one character byte are interpreted uh, as a palette. In addition, uh, there are no inverse characters, it makes no sense in, in color mode to have inverse characters, therefore this additional bit, the most significant bit in the screen memory, is used to indicate that instead of color three, a color four register is used. So the inverse characters use a different color register, giving you a total of five colors to choose from, with some restrictions. Okay, 13 is the same as 12, but again the pixels are square, saving half of the memory. And then we have the multicolor high resolution modes. So uh, again here we have the single color mode, double the resolution of mode 6, and we have the multicolor high res mode with two pixels per uh, two bits per pixel, so you get four colors to choose from, 
and it needs again the full 8k. Well, these are all the modes that there are. The interesting thing about Antic is that uh, as opposed to what you see on this screen, you do not really have to use the same mode for the complete screen. You can actually change it every mode line and this is what you see here. Actually in this screen the upper area is high resolution graphics and this new X with a question mark, this is a text area where you can input text. And um, what is different on the Atari opposed to other home computers is that to do this you do not need the CPU. On other computers you would have to create something like an interrupt and switch from graphics mode to text mode in this line. This is something that you statically define in the display list and Antic does it all by himself. Yeah, so you can mix all Antic modes, you can create something that has a text, some graphic, again some text, some low resolution text and so on. And you can define this and the CPU does not have to care about it. Yeah, that's it. These are the 15 magic graphic modes. The reason why I did not show it on the system, apart from the fact that um, that you need basic to do something simple, uh, is that you need to understand how the display list is built to show it in assembler and this is what you will see in the next parts. <laughs>